I'm The Hooded Lid and welcome to my channel. As promised, I wanted to get to you with a couple of ideas for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is upon us and I did some research. I kept on going to Sephora waiting for one particular scent to be on the floor and it never happened. And that is the new Atelier, which sounded very, very promising. And I tried, no kidding, for four weeks. So I wanted to bring you three but I'm going to only bring you two, unfortunately. I did look at some other things. I looked at something from Nest, which was promising, but didn't have anything going on. It was just too synthetic. I tried a couple from Gucci Bloom, which is making me nuts because they're all promising, but they're all mundane. They're all just not that interesting. The bottles are more interesting than the juice, unfortunately. The two I did find are beautiful. One of them is a unisex, so if you're looking to buy something for your man, let's start with that. Although, if you're looking to buy something for your woman, I love this. My samples, by the way, came from Scent Bar, otherwise known as Lucky Scent Online. They have a brick and mortar, and they also have an online presence, and they're lovely, lovely people. When you're testing with little vials, uh, you don't get quite the same effect as you're getting with a spray, but you know, Sephora does tons of rollerballs, so kind of consider it like that. Not my favorite way to test something, but I did spray both of them in store several weeks ago when I got these samples. So, starting off with, I think, is something that is unisex. You can buy it for your man. Your man can buy it for his woman, i.e. you. Drop some hints. That is called, and I'm going to mispronounce this, Oliers by Roberto Greco. It's 50 mil and it's 215, and I should just get out of the way that these are not inexpensive. But Valentine's Day is a special day. The nose on this is Marc Antoine Corticciato. That's my guess. And he appears to be the nose for Parfums de Empire because he has a lot of those under his credit. The notes are eucalyptus, broom, chamomile, lavender, cumin, incense, hay, musk, and strax. I cannot tell you how much this reminds me of the Gucci Memoir de Odeur. If you love that, but like me found that it only lasted for a half an hour and you're constantly respraying it or re-rolling it, this is for you. Just like that one, it has a leathery quality to it, but a, a more buttery than harsh. It's so beautiful. Now, broom I only have in my mind from Dune, which I can't really articulate where it is in Dune, but I do recognize a similarity in some of the notes, or a little bit, but like an aridness maybe, in this one, but it's not an arid perfume. That chamomile is just so beautiful. Now these don't smell, both in the Gucci and in this, don't smell exactly like chamomile. I oftentimes buy chamomile flowers and put them on the sofa um, table behind my sofa. So they're just right here. And I love it. After a few days, it really blooms and scents that area. It smells very similar to chamomile tea as well. These don't smell like chamomile tea, but I would say this is incredibly similar to the Gucci and it lasts for hours and hours and the dry down is beautiful. It just, it opens lovely, but it just keeps that, what I think of as a leathery quality, but is the chamomile. It just keeps on going for hours and hours. It's not screaming feminine, which is one of the reasons why I think it can be a masculine. And the leather nature that I am perceiving from it also kind of says masculine, but it's an unusual masculine in that it's not, well, a lot of the masculines I, I just dislike. There is lavender in here, which would put it in the Fougere category, but I don't get the lavender, thankfully. It's just beautiful. Now this is warming, so if you live in a climate where it's still freezing and it doesn't seem right to wear a light floral, this will kind of get you that transition from winter to spring, I think. It might be too heavy in the summer, maybe. It's not a heavy scent, it's not like an oriental, but it's not quite floral enough for me personally to think this would work in the summer. That's just the way I'm interpreting the scent, but fall, winter, spring, 
absolutely. Next up is from Emwage. Emwage is not known for its inexpensive perfumes. This is 100 ml for $380. But unbelievably, it's a better price than the Oliers. Um, this is called Love Mimosa. It comes in a beautiful pale yellow bottle that I crave. And the scent is gorgeous spring floral with mimosa as the star. Oh gosh, it is so gorgeous. I sprayed this on and then went shopping, uh, went to Trader Joe's to pick up a couple of things and I got a compliment on the perfume. In my life, I very rarely, but let's say in the last six years, very rarely does someone say, oh, you smell so lovely. People tend to, I mean, that's such a personal thing that people might think it, but it really takes a lot to stop someone and say, what are you wearing? And I got that when I wore this. The last time I got it was probably five years ago. I was in a parking garage and probably a hundred yards from this man who said, you smell great. <laughs> he kind of shouted it out. This is stunning. It is called Love Mimosa and it is, Elise Bennett was the perfumer. I looked her up and she seems to be fairly new. She's only has things from, I think, 2016. I've not smelled any of them, but one of them was for uh, Laura Bigatotti, and I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sure it's called Laura Tender, and the other one for Jill Sander called Softly Eau de Pastel. So I'm thinking this is her milieu. She likes these soft florals and she hit it on this one. The notes are violet leaf, cassolone, and orris. Cassolone or cassolone is a synthetic made to impart the nature of aquatics, so a watery nature. Uh, middle notes are mimosa, pear, which thankfully I don't get, and paradison. Paradison is kind of a fake flower that runs to white florals slash tropical. So gardenia, fragapini is the two that I uh, remember. And then the base notes are ylang ylang, ambrox, another synthetic, and heliotrope. And ambrox is supposed to impart ambergie. I recently smelled something that is said to be very similar to ambergie, and it doesn't. And I think a lot of people think ambergie means amber. It does not. There could be a warmth, a tonality of amber in ambergie, depending on your perception, but it is not the same thing. But there is a warmth in the base note here, and it is a beautiful mix on e each level, the open, the middle, and the end. They've taken those synthetics and used them in the most appropriate way, and just effectively. You, oftentimes I smell things, like another thing that I, I got a sample of the other day that I thought might make it was something from Nest, which was really beautiful in its opening and then it became insipid because I'm going to just guess it's 90% synthetics and the synthetics by themselves don't smell good to me. They just don't have any personality, any life, any depth, any charm, or anything unusual. With synthetics used in this manner, I think, is really the best way to use synthetics. You use them where the ingredients are no longer available or cost prohibitive or too rare. And this scent is just heartbreakingly beautiful, delicate floral. Now, I've had this on for maybe an hour, so it is in its dry down. And its dry down has a warmth and fullness and and beautiful floral nature to it. It's a lovely dry down, but the opening is magic. It is the violet leaf, yes, but I get the lilac right from the start. That watery nature absolutely comes through. So watery lilac mimosa. I don't get the pear. If there's a sparkling nature to this, but it is not sparkling. It doesn't have the warmth and sparkle from amber, for instance, in my opinion. And it doesn't have the, um, boy, I can't think of the word, oh, the effervescence that comes from the note that is predominant in the opening of Chanel. And I swear, I guess I'm having a brain fart right now, but that is not the kind of sparkly nature that we're getting from this one. It's more like a sparkling, like it, it dances. It is just such a beautiful, fresh, 
sunshine in a bottle. It's rather cool, but the base has a warmth emanating from it, but it's not as warm as the Olier's. Mm, I smell so good today. So really, it's the Olier, which could be unisex. Maybe it's for the woman who doesn't like something too girly, too feminine, too floral. For the girl who does like something feminine and floral and girly, but not insipid, not mundane, not like everything else, then it's this one, the Love Mimosa. And those are my two choices. I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to bring you more. I tried, and I wanted to bring you things that were fairly new in the last six months or so, or certainly in the last year, and the choices just weren't there for me. I will say that I continue to love Chloe Nomad, and that's also a beautiful one that works year-round. I, I put that on the other day for a meeting that I had, and I finally was struck with the plum, which I had never gotten before, but it just came just clear as a bell straight from the open. So if you're buying for someone who likes something a little bit more fruity, the Chloe Nomad might be a good idea. It's only been out for a couple of years, but of new releases, these two are so special. And if you're looking to get something really special for Valentine's Day. I just don't think you can go wrong with this. I could be wrong, but I think it's pretty good. So I'm wishing you a very happy holiday. I'm wishing that you have good luck finding the perfect perfume for the person in your life, and stay tuned. I am gathering my notes and thoughts together on spring perfumes or maybe spring transitions. I'm getting a list that's kind of big, so it might be in two videos, and those will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'm the Hooded Lid. Thanks so much for spending a little time with me. I hope it was helpful to you, and I hope you come back again. In the meantime, I'm wishing you a great day.